I'm Homaro Cantu. And I'm Trevor Rose Hamlin. Together we run one of the world's most creative restaurants. To stay ahead of the game, every six weeks our menu changes. And it always comes down to the wire. Can our staff keep up? We, we are, are all, all cooking, cooking under, under pressure. pressure. Hey, uh, Trevor, you got a minute? Oh, hey, Omar, what's up, man? Are you are you on your way in? Uh-huh. All right, well, I've been going through the Facebook post, so we gotta get this menu decided on, so I think I got the perfect menu. Oh, yeah, what'd you come up with? What do you think we do, uh, Debbie Does Dallas? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I think that'll go really well with our, uh, with our crowd, definitely. You know what, dude, it'd be great. We get the videos on the walls, you know, it'll be like the full experience. Sure, sure. Uh, w does Dallas it is then. Um, no, what, 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 what are we really doing, yeah? Um, no, uh, how about the Nightmare Before Christmas? Yeah. That sounds awesome, yeah, uh, let's do it. I'm into it. Well, when you get in, we'll meet with the chefs and we'll figure out which way is up and which way is down. Uh, I think we can get behind that. I think that's a great, a great theme, uh, especially in between the holidays here. Uh-huh. All right, man, talk to you later. All right, bye. Okay guys, here we go. We had a big success with uh, Martin Scorsese. It was very dark, it was very depressing. Uh, we decided to crowdsource this next menu and I think we got a winner. What is it, Chef? Um, it's the Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> what? Uh, nice. Uh, uh, yeah, Nightmare, nightmare before, before Christmas. Before Christmas. Yeah, what are you gonna do? I've never seen that movie before. You've never seen it? <laughs> Come on, man. It's like every childhood fantasy right there. Boom, in one movie. See, I still haven't seen the movie. I've been busy, I've been f***ing driving around. Come all right? Back. Yeah. All right, anybody got it? He's got the movie. He's got the movie. You just, you just so happened to bring that in, Charlie. Amazing. Amazing Dude, happened. you get a raise, okay? Sweet. All right, all right, let me pop that bad boy in. Okay. Holy, it's already in the laptop, look at that. Okay, let's, uh, let's get in here and uh, let's watch The Nightmare Before Christmas. Dude, Rob's this rad. movie is freaky. Yeah. It's just like... This is a scene that I was thinking is perfect for food. Yeah. yeah. You got the frog's breath. Oops. Green soup. Yeah. Wow. Poison Rick soup, essentially. You gotta do skull and crossbones with it. So they get the poisonous soup, then they get the, the soup that removes the poison, the antidote. Yeah. I like that. All right, cool. So I got this idea. Um, since I've never seen a movie, but uh, the movie to me sounds like it's pretty much Halloween going into Christmas. So what if I make a dish that looks like Halloween but tastes like Christmas? Uh, uh, for example. So what if I take uh, a baby pumpkin that can fit in the palm of your hand, uh, comfy in brown butter, I want pumpkin pie spices, uh, make a candle, a candle would be cool. I'll put a candle inside the pumpkin and make like an egg and all cluster as a candle. Um, that way you can light the candle. All right, let's have it ready by five. Copy that, chef. All right, so here we are going to Woodfield Mall, the land of nothing for hands. And these are very expensive hands. I mean, I don't know if you saw the quality of this hand, but it's got some weight to it. You know, it's probably like a pound and a half a hand right there. We can't have anything that's not magical or, or cool. It's just gotta be something that people have never had before. Um, and, and that is definitely what this is gonna be. So, and I just missed damn access. Hot dogs. I'm gonna go ahead and see if the 10% off all furniture includes the hand. Because if I'm putting that hand on a couch, that's furniture, all right? That counts. So let's go in here and see what these guys say. You can serve a hot dog inside this little dog here. You know, you can just pull it apart, put your hot dog in, put it together, saw the dog in half, it's like a magic trick. Boom, saw him in half, pull it apart, you got a hot dog. We can do a speakeasy menu. Gold bars, look at that, gold bouillon. In your speakeasy, you gotta have some gold bouillon. It's just not a speakeasy without a gold bouillon. That's what people think when you roll up with a camera. They think you're 
You're that guy from Catch a Predator. All these kids around. This would be the perfect place to film that show. Nobody would ever come to this mall again. That's what we should do. We should pretend like we're filming that and we should get a Chris Hansen mask with a wig and just run around creeping up, <laughs> creeping up on all the old men. <laughs> just wanted to talk to you for a minute. What do you think of this hand? Well, first of all, when they asked us, A, why are you buying hands, and B, what's that do with the camera doing? I was like, look, I, I gotta explain this to you. We're here to buy these hands because we're filming a show about hands as a first course on a menu. And if you could please give us a hand with that, that'd be great. And they were very gracious and they gave us a hand, so now we're going to pick up more hands. And um, look, no hands. That would be better. Alec, you crazy? <laughs> All right, so today we're down on uh, Chicago's uh, Magnificent Mile to uh, go into a Disney store to pick up uh, something for one of our pairings uh, for the show. Omar gave me notice uh, last night on his way out that I need to make a cocktail uh, for today. So let's we'll see what I can find. Uh, I haven't been to a Disney store since uh, 1999. Uh, and I was told that I have to stay uh, 500 yards away from any Disney store uh, from that point on, but maybe they won't recognize me. We'll see. Let's check it out. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Oh. Complete failure. Uh, apparently they're trying to push the Frankenweenie stuff. They can't have that much uh, macabre sh in uh, one place at one time. Um, I guess I'm gonna go to a party store and see if I can find some Halloween stuff. Uh, we'll see. If I could have ordered it and uh, given a couple days notice, maybe I could have gotten it, but that's not how Omar operates. So we'll see, uh, we'll see what we can come up with today. Let's go to Doolin's. Well, uh, Disney was a complete bust, so uh, now we're shooting over to uh, a little south on uh, Michigan Ave. Check out this Halloween store. Uh, apparently Disney hates money and doesn't want to release any of their Nightmare Before Christmas stuff around uh, Halloween. So uh, we're going to go see what they got. So, so uh, let's head in and check it out. Might need this for later when this doesn't work out. <laughs> There's nothing here. I wanted to support the small businesses and try and get something where I could give them a few extra bucks, but. I think it is time to go corporate. So I think we're gonna shoot over and uh, try and find something at one of the uh, larger stores now. So the I can think of left. Damn. So I've been at it for like two hours now just searching for a f***ing chalice to put this thing in. And I've not yet even begun to start to make my cocktail. So I'm hoping that this one hits the target. <laughs> Awful. Oh, if we got poison flasks? Um, if we put the cocktails in poison glass and then serve them in cocktail glasses at the table, I think that could really work. It's not exactly the plan I set out for in the first place, but I like it. I like it. What about the flavor changing course? I mean, we, we gotta have something explosive for this because it's all about the Miracle Berry here. I mean, it's okay that we're doing, you know, this uh, nightmare on an Elm Street thing, but we gotta have, you know, big, badass, you know, what is it? I had an idea for the flavor changing course. You take a, a snowman, but you make it like Christmas versus Halloween, good versus evil. You take your snowman, but it has uh, a huge, scary black shadow behind it. One thing that I love on the Miracle Berry is gin and tonics. So we, we do a gin and tonic snowman, and then it's like the snowman's moving. So you do like little spots of the snowman, and then the shadow's just huge, you know what I mean? So it's like he's running away, but he can't get away. It's the end of his life. <laughs>
but I did see something that caught my eye. Um, well, we don't have like any cups or anything cool like that. Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm thinking maybe little cauldrons. Actually, there's no holes in the bottom of them. I think it'd be kind of cool to get your first uh, little cocktail served inside of a cauldron. And if I can get a way to get it to kind of smoke at the table, that's what I really wanted to do. But, you know, we'll see how that works out. Um, and we'll see if Omar likes it. I mean, today could have been a total waste if I come in and Omar's like, yeah, dude, sorry. It all sucks. Let's do this instead. And that's completely possible. I'm concerned about my final cocktail because Omar wanted two cocktails today. I've got the stuff for one right now. I don't have the stuff for two. I mean, but with only so many hours in the day, we'll see what I can come up with. But I usually make it work down to the wire. Doing this cocktail creation is definitely gonna cut into my time getting ready for tonight's service, which is busy. Like this is like the busiest weekday we've ever had. So we'll see how it goes. All right, you guys ready? Yeah. We got 68 people tonight. And uh, we also got to get these dishes out. So in addition to your already fucked up jobs, we have to kick out these dishes by 5 o'clock tonight, and we got to make it happen. I don't care what you have to do. Go to the moon, go to Mars, call your grandparents, ask them for forgiveness. Do you see what that says? You have to have a sense of urgency in that. Is that what that says? No, that means God help you. Any questions? No? OK. Great, thanks. I'm gonna need one, one uh, large size pumpkin. Uh, pumpkin. And you say you wanna do it for six people, right? Six to ten, the easy six baby pumpkins probably too. Yeah, right? so let's get like five baby pumpkins. As well as like a share plate, so. Hey guys, can we order more carrots? Uh, I wanted to reenact the, the scene where the pumpkin king walks up on the mountain with the, the moon behind him. Uh, so I started thinking, oh, what can we do with that? How can we make that moon? How can we make the little mountain? So we got octopus. Chuck, what's up with the, uh, what's up with the octopus? Chef, I, uh, I ordered the small, the babyest that they could get us on the octo, and they sent us like one, one and a half pounders. Just not to do yeah, no, but did you call them? I called them, I emailed the guy Daniel, I let him know that we want the babies. Are you mean the line? Yeah. Okay. Flavor tripping. I gotta get ready, because I, I gotta make this dish. You gotta be flavor tripping when you make the flavor tripping dish. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, Homaro Cantu with uh, Ng Restaurant. How you doing? I'm very Good. Uh, we need baby octopus. Can you guys get this? And purveyors. These guys. I thought purveyors were supposed to get me food. I'm not supposed to go and fish for this Squid. Always order your product ahead of time. They say it a thousand ways, and I don't know why. They, uh, they just don't, they think that I'm insane. Why would they think I'm insane? That's just crazy. Fresh and frozen fish and seafood. Wait, isn't fish seafood? That seems kind of redundant. Wonder how much the extra they paid for that sign. Octopus. Ha, they got it. And hero, hero dreams of sushi, nightmares of sushi. Well, we're gonna go put this in the mixer to tenderize it because even though they tell you it's tenderized, it's not really tenderized. So we'll do this for about a half hour, 45 minutes. The chef saw this on some fucked up movie called Heroes Dreams or something.
so we've got the uh, the palate cleanser, which is the flavor changer. Right. All right. This is everything in this menu. If we don't have flavor changing, we're we're just like every other restaurant. So we got the snowman. It's going to be a gin and tonic snowman. He's going to be running away from his own shadow. Correct. Which is like the boogeyman or whatever yeah. the hell that is. Pretty much. Okay. Um, and then uh, what we need to figure out is first of all, how do we make the snowman? Vinny. Um, I mean, it's going to be your world. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a foam. Um, we're going to just play around with the flavors for the gin and tonic, try and get a good balance on that. And uh, you wanted to nitro it and get yeah. it nice and cold at the table. Nitro it. Um, so when it hits the table, it's sort of like a frozen foam. They can shatter it if they want. Adds a little bit more of that wow factor. OK, that sounds violent. I like that. <laughs> I like violence. Okay, that's cool. cool. So we'll take the lime, put it in nitro, shatter it, carbonate those little vesicles. Um, good. I'll tell you what, I'll do the shadow, you do the snowman with him, and then uh, you also do the line vessels. All right, copy that, Chef. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. I'm Homaro Cantu, spokesman for Emberry and owner of Ing Restaurant in Chicago. What is Emberry? Emberry is a berry that when you put it on your tongue, it's going to make lemons taste like lemonade. It's like a magic carpet ride for flavor. But don't take my word for it. Take my word for it. It's like a surreal experience. In fact, we're gonna give you a little demonstration of what you can do with this berry at home. You must sweep the leg. But Sensei, I will be disqualified. Bonsai! Typically, when you drink soda, what you're getting is artificial flavors, colors, soda water, and sugar. But thanks to the Amberry, the only thing that we need to achieve that is soda water and good old fashioned lemon juice. And that makes life sweeter. I know what you're thinking. How does he maintain that phenomenal physique? Well, I don't actually spend hours at the gym. What I do is I get my Amberry pack. Berries actually grow on trees. And then I just take one of these tablets, pop it on my tongue, and then I'm about to endure a journey, a flavor ride like no other. So due to our sponsor, you know, earlier, he explained that we use this miracle berry powder. This is what it comes from. This is a freeze-dried block of Miracle Berry. Um, so they take the berries, they freeze-dry them, and then they send it to us in these blocks. This one right here weighs a quarter of a kilo. That's worth about $2,000. That costs more than white truffles. That's crazy. So what we do is we turn it into this powder right here, and this powder is roughly 15 cents a dose. So our street value here goes down per dose, but we're able to satisfy as many customers as we can with our product. First hits free. So basically I'm just uh, gonna figure out, you know, the gin and tonic flavors. Can't plan out too much ahead of time, so figure it out, should be good. Pipe it out, see how it holds. I'm gonna take these limes. Right now I'm just supreming the uh, little segments out of them. And I'm gonna put them between a couple bowls, a little bit of liquid nitrogen, shake, 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 and get some lime vesicles out of it. How's it going? Good. Yeah. We have a CO2 tank. Do we have one? Yes. I'm sure we got one. Hey Andy, do we got a CO2 tank laying around? We just spent the afternoon shopping, so I've got a, a few items here. You might remember a Boston shaker with the poison symbol on the front of it. It's like a pumpkin chai tea apple cider. Um, it looks, looks and sounds good. I think with um, DeAndre Sears, of course, he's got a roasted pumpkin, essentially. On the inside, he's going to be doing like this little bit of pork yet. So when I think about pork, I'm thinking immediately like apples. All right, that's time to check on his ham. Oh, it's ham? Yeah. Okay, well, 
ham. <laughs> when I got over here and um, I knew it was going to be a different challenge. Uh, that's pretty much what I wanted. Um, yeah, and what was that next question? <laughs> Andy, what's up, buddy? How you doing? <laughs> what's up, Chef? How you doing? Let's see it. That's what do you got? Uh, Wait, I gotta get this it. wasn't a dish with chicken. We were supposed to use pumpkin, right? Yeah. And a metal hand or something? Yeah. All right. Well, where's that? We got to start, sir. So. What's this for? This is for, uh, for, for the team to eat. Oh, yeah. staff meal. Yeah. Okay, well, we can give them a disease later on. Let's get this thing going, buddy. All right, have a one. In this industry, it, uh, it's never as you plan. So uh, we have timing constraints and we didn't get to do the dish that we want, but we're gonna put it out tonight for uh, service. Let some people mess around with it, try it, give us our feedback. So you just move past it, hope for your team to help pick you up. That's what it's been all afternoon is helping each other just try and get to this spot and we're about ready for service. So it's what, it's almost five o'clock. Getting smoke. Oh yeah, we're getting smoke. Let's see if maybe we get a little smoking action when I pour it out. And nothing. Lovely. So in the movie Nightmare Before Christmas, we get introduced to Jack Skellington and he's in a graveyard. Essentially he's atop a hill that kind of unravels itself into a graveyard. So kind of representing that hill tonight, we have some olive oil poached octopus. Representing the large, beautiful moon behind, we have a little bit of a steamed dumpling that's been stuffed with hanshimeji mushrooms. And then we've got some uh, micro daikon greens that'll add a little bit of almost spice to this whole dish. And then of course, Jack's face brandishing the moon on this certain evening. So please, enjoy. I'm not a shellfish person, but I will eat this um, leg. I'm trying to taste the daikon. What do you think? It's a tentacle in my mouth. It's a little salty, but it's, it's not to the point of being unbearable. All right, gentlemen, for your next drink this evening, we have it's a little bit of a pumpkin chai tea. We've mixed that with a little bit of a black strap molasses rum. We also have a little bit of apple cider vinegar, uh, apple cider, and uh, a little bit of bitters as well. Right. Please enjoy. Great, thank you. Cheers. Kind of syrupy. Yeah. Like a cough syrup. Yeah. What? What? What do you got to say? This, this gun's dying. Why is it good dying? Did you clean it? Yes, I cleaned it every fire. It's melted. We need help with this one. We want to get a little bit of Christmas and a little bit of Halloween and just a couple bites here. I'm going to lay a wick here. And this is a sweet potato wick that's going to kind of burn down and add a little bit of a toasty character to this whole course. All right. All right, please enjoy. Great, thank you. Now you get the flavor trip. So we've got Jack's full-on descent into Christmas land. The uh, actual eyes, mouth, and nose are made from black lava salt. The dust here on the other side, we got a lot of alpine spices there, a little bit of a juniper berry. On the plate there as well, we have a little bit of a lime puree with lime vesicles. And then in the center, we've got uh, some lemons and some miracle berry for you. So essentially anything that is sour turns sweet, and it's bitter turns more savory under the influence. Please enjoy. Oh my. Sour. The biggest challenge for me is actually keeping up with everybody because I'm the newest guy, so I'm the slowest guy. I'm always kind of prepping into service a little bit, which is a no no. See why it's not. Who's got a lighter? The diners hated it. We completely failed. They were just, they were depressed. They were upset. 
that we invited them for friends and family and we gave them a free meal. That's how bad this was. They were upset that they got a free meal from Ng Restaurant. We're gonna have to go back to the drawing board. We have to make this work, okay? We gotta do everything better. I have taken the liberty of eating better carrots. Okay, you see this? This is a burgundy red Starburst carrot. I'm done with that other shit. But we're better than that, aren't we? We're awesome. I need to have eyes in the back of my head. You gotta have eyes in the back of your head. And then we're gonna be able to see everything before it even happens. What do you think we do, uh, Demi does Dallas? <laughs> Yeah. What's gonna happen next, guys? What are we gonna do? We gonna make this thing happen? If we, if we make it happen, then we won't look like losers, okay? We're not losers, you're a winner, and people love you, all right? That's what this is all about, you love, right? I love you. I'm gonna be washing dishes. Who knows who Rudy Ruger is? The kid from the movie Rudy? I'm fucking Rudy. Okay, I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna be like, go, go, go. I'm gonna hit that 900 yard line dash and we're gonna make this thing happen, all right? So let's do this in the kitchen right now. I have no idea what's going on in the kitchen. I don't know if they're doing the right dishes. I don't know if their product's coming in on time. And you know, for all I know, they could be standing still staring at each other. Time could be moving, you know, deathly slow for them. They got it. What am I worried about? Those guys are rock stars. The thing that I really like about DeAndre is um, for like four years, this guy rode the train to work. You know, he'd have to ride the train for an hour and go to school, come to work, uh, work till two in the, in the morning at Moto, and he would do that every day, five, six, seven days a week, and not one sick day in like three and a half, maybe four years. There are no measurements to go by. Everything is just being invented as we go. It's like an artist. He'll just get a feel for it first, understand his canvas and then perfect it over time. Once he gets to something that he's happy with, he'll measure it out and then it'll be calculated, accurate and consistent every time. Really it is, right? First bite, it's really good. And anything with eggnog makes me really happy. Really happy. <laughs> I just don't feel like, I don't want to destroy this little guy here. I love octopus. But this I was going to say, this is the best like I've the ever tasted dumpling. octopus, though. Yeah, the dumpling and the broth and the mushroom. Yeah. Yum. Pretty tiring, right? Okay. You ready? We got a layer of this, and then we try the lemon to see if... And to be able to bite into a lemon without wincing and... Is it working? It's like magic. I feel pretty good about the menu. Yeah. Um, first day is always rough. You know, people are burning stuff and <laughs> orders aren't coming in and Omar's got to have plane, you know, plane trains and automobiles to get shit done. Trevor has to go and torture the kids over at the Disney <laughs> store. I mean, you got to do what you got to do. That was just fun, yeah. No, I think uh, I'm, I'm super proud of the team, you know, it's, it's really awesome whenever you're uh, faced with something like this um, to kind of see how people come together and make things work. And um, I couldn't be more proud of the team right now. Just have just the sauce, 
but otherwise still have to throw the pearl onions in. That would be kind of your garnish along with it. Because traditionally, that's how you do board and young. I don't know, maybe I'll just bring something that the experienced people have kind of brushed off as throwaway ideas. Everything's new to me. I believe uh, knowledge comes from uncertainty, so you, you can't be content with what you know. You always want to know more. And at this point, I'm noticing a lot of parallels between this movie and kind of the way we've been operating as a restaurant from the very beginning. And I think it was kind of an enlightening experience because I noticed that, you know, Jack, when he's spending some time in, in Halloween Town, he's trying to like become something he's not. He goes to he goes to Christmas Town and he just messes everything up. And I think when we first started this project, it was kind of like, you know, what are we gonna do here? You know, do we are we gonna venture away? And we started off kind of with like a la carte thing, and then we decided to go into this tasting menu format of doing really creative, kind of off the wall stuff, and it was kind of getting back to our roots, kind of coming back home, back to Halloween Town. You guys have done a really great job, all right? You guys deserve a round of applause, so here's to you. Trevor, how do you think that went, man? Cheers. Cheers. To a, a nice ice cold beer for you, man. Yeah, well deserved. That's That's great. Well. Yeah, I can't believe that we did that. Why? <laughs> Why would that ever happen? Damn it. Son of a I'm drinking this beer now. That's happening. So he's gonna pay. I got Zane into this world. I could pluck him out of it. It was so cold, I can't even hold this beer. So this is a problem you have to stop following me now because I have to get changed into something better. Thank you for that. Which one is it? I don't know. Wait, maybe it's this one. Uh, I don't know, man. Meals on wheels. Keys no, in it? No keys? That's not it. Not us. Oh, I gotta use the key. The D for drive. Oh, D. All right. <laughs> Why is the engine light on? I don't know. It's probably fine. Okay, keep a look out here, Trevor. We're going to find the, uh, the destination here on our right. Okay, I'm not sure what I'm looking for, but I'll keep an eye out. It looks like you might want to take a right right up here. Oh, yeah. Because there's a right turn only sign. Right, it says only, so that's where we have to go. Oh, you mean we're going to this place with all these people with the one car in the parking lot? One car. Spears Woods. Yeah, this is the place. Spears Woods. And who gave you this lead again? Jeff Morrow. He owns Jam, you know, he owns his truck. We talked about this, Trevor. Uh, I understand that. I just, uh... I don't see any people here, Omar. Oh, we got a customer. <laughs> there we go. See, he's looking for us, man. We're late. Why do I have a feeling that that guy's gonna be the end of me? He's gonna have something to do with my demise. No, you gotta be a nice guy to be walking around the woods by yourself. Yeah, or you're going to check out the graves of all the people you've killed. We've got four cars here, man. They must know we're here. I mean, that's like four cars in two minutes. <laughs> yeah, At this great. rate, we're gonna be rich. And all these guys definitely don't look like serial killers. Trevor, the land of opportunity, buddy. Yeah, it kind of just looks like a forest preserve. You smell that air? Yeah, it smells like uh, diesel fuel, man. It's good for your good for your soul. All right. Well, we're in nature, so. Hey, uh, do you think this truck has a bathroom? Yeah, I was thinking that myself. I got to go pretty bad, and I don't really see anything else around here. Yeah, I gotta go, man. That three hour drive was just long. All right, well, uh, looks like we're going on natural today. All right, uh, just don't go too far, man. Uh, I can't promise that. I don't want anybody looking at me, right. especially not you, you creep. You better hurry, because these customers are leaving. <sighs> as good a spot as any, I suppose. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> I think I might have wandered a little too far. Where the f am I? Omar? 
<laughs> oh shit. Got it, man. They fing leave me. So scared right now. I don't know where the fuck I am. I think somebody's following me. Over! Where is everybody? F Trevor, what the fuck are you doing? Are you watching your Don't fuck your on my food truck time, damn it. No time for this. Trevor? Oh my god. Trevor! Oh my god! <laughs> Trevor, are you awake? Wake up! No. No! Ah! Get some ground chest. I almost stepped in a pile of horse shit.